And let's get this countdown time out of here. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Breakfast with Disaster. Uh, we tell you all the worst things that can happen to you so you know how to avoid them. Uh, how do we know that? Because we're surf pro and we're the people who clean those things up. We are live every Tuesday at 10, 10 a.m. I am Dan Bauer. I've got a special guest here, Taylor Braun. Hello, Taylor. I'm Taylor. Uh, uh, many people may already know Taylor. You're a fairly popular figure on this here broadcast. But yeah, you, wanna, you know, a couple times. Yeah. Do you want to <laughs> introduce yourself? Like, say who you are. Um, I'm uh, Taylor, uh, uh, production manager here at uh, Surf Pro the South Towns. Um, so you know, I've got a uh, been here two so a long, long time. a long yeah. time. Uh, there's a, there isn't much I haven't seen really. So. You know, I'm uh, I'm well versed in the uh, doom and gloom that we deal with yeah. on a daily basis. Uh, well, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, you're also here, and I feel like today's going to be sort of like a quiet one. A lot of people are probably off from the fourth; they're still recovering. But it was a big weekend for you personally, so yeah, I got my uh, my new jet ski out, yeah, so see. that's pretty sweet. So what is that yeah. exactly that we're looking so, at here? That's, <laughs> um, that's a good picture, right? That's a great picture. It's uh, it's my Kawasaki Jetmate. Yeah, they. Uh, Pretty rare. They didn't make a ton of them. It's basically just like a floating bathtub you drive yeah. on the lake. Um, uh, what else happened? Oh, yeah, and I got engaged. Yeah, so. Too. Yeah, I have proposed to my uh, now fiancé. Um, she said yes, yeah. so. I thought you had a ring to show no, off. No, no, no. Up. I'm too reckless. I can't, I can't be <laughs> responsible with a ring. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Taylor got engaged. It was yep. uh, a beautiful moment. And you can see here the water in the background and, and your dog, Abraham Lincoln, in the middle. Yeah, yeah. She uh, she felt like she needed to be in the mix. That yeah. was totally unprovoked. She just <laughs> kind of walked over and was like, hey, what's going on over here? She knows how to center a shot. Yeah, she's pretty photogenic, i got to be honest. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was, uh, it was exciting. It was nerve-wracking. Uh, Very yeah. nerve-wracking. I was fine all week, all day. And like 25 minutes before I was going to do it, I started kind of freaking out. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was like just pacing around a lot and like you did do some sweaty hands. It was a mess. So Taylor and I are celebrating his um, engagement in maybe the you know least romantic way. Um, <laughs> we're shipping off to Surf Pro Convention shortly. We're going to be down in Dallas for the week. So yep, very if anybody excited. needs some Texan swag, let me know. We'll, we'll be down there from the 6th to the 9th. Yeah. Um, so hit me up if you yeah, guys... Any cowboy know, fans yeah, or anything? Cowboy hats or barbecue sauce or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, Dallas Cowboy stuff. We've got it also. Just let me know. Um, everybody's saying good morning. Oh, um, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're gonna actually we're gonna get into the show here. And Taylor, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this because you're off. You're on the front lines of most of these yeah. jobs. Um, doing something called the Disaster Forecaster. We do it every month. We look back at I believe it's about ten years of data. Yep. Uh, past jobs that we have done, and we just get a sense of kind of what's coming next. What do we yeah. usually see in July? And we actually, for maybe the first time ever, have kind of good news. We actually tend yeah. to see fewer <laughs> disasters in July. Yeah, it's usually our slower time. Um, I think it probably has a lot to do with people are just, I feel like they're home more. You know, mm. like kids are out of school now, you know, people who have teaching jobs or seasonal jobs, stuff like that, they're home more. So, like, they'll catch that, like, they're supply line to the ice maker on their fridge is like dripping a little bit now mm. or you know they don't leave a candle burning overnight and then all day the next day and it doesn't catch their end table on fire or something right. you know i think it's just a lot more people are home in the homes now kind of keeping a closer eye on things um and yeah we usually do see a, a little bit of a slowdown mm -hmm. in july but what we see pick up and this is what we're going to be talking about is construction Yes. So a lot of people don't realize this. We've got our whole in-house construction team, like master craftsmen who do all of our construction for us. And this is when their work starts to pick up because people are home more. Yeah. Or if you're looking at, say, a school, schools can do construction during summer that they could not do during um, you know, the regular school year. Exactly. And you see that side of the business start to pick up the construction model. And yeah. a lot of people, I said, don't know this because it's a relatively new addition. I mean, it's probably in the last, what, seven years? Yeah, I would say we started probably about seven years ago. And it was always just kind of, you know, real small crew, just enough to keep them busy. But now, I mean, it's expanded to, you know, a much bigger crew of reconstruction and just much more reconstruction work coming in now, yeah. too, on our end. And what we found and kind of the reason we made this switch um, is, well, there's a particular data point that I would pull from this J.D. Power. Okay. Study. 
Uh, so, J.D. Power, every single year, you probably know them from, like, car stuff, right? Yeah. Cars are always, like, J.D. Power, customer satisfaction brands. Yeah. What J.D. Power really does isn't just car stuff. They they look at everything, um, all sorts of businesses to see how people are satisfied, what their sort of read on that industry as a whole is. And so, they look at the insurance industry as well. Specifically, they have a property claims satisfaction study that comes out every single year. Uh, they gather data from people who put in claims, uh, about 6,000, 7,000 every single year, and you just try to sort out what makes that process go well. And that's obviously something that's important to us because we can Absolutely. be a pretty big part of an insurance claim. Oh, yeah. I mean, we can, you know, be the, the lion's share of it, you know. Mm -hmm. Restoration and, you know, the, just the mitigation and the rebuild end of it. Yeah. That could be 90% of that claim's total cost, you know, mm -hmm. not, not including replacements of, you know, all that sure. stuff. And so... There's all sorts of data points in this study, and I'd be more than willing to share them with anybody, especially insurance professionals. Um, no matter how involved you actually are firsthand in a claim, it can be helpful to know what the potential pitfalls are and what the potential, um, the best ways to handle things to make sure people are going to be satisfied. Um, number one, actually, I believe it's number three, but it comes out to be number one. 33% of people said that one of the most important things to them was having somebody who could handle this kind of full service approach and the answer for that is you know the reason for that is pretty obvious um going through a property claim especially like a serious one like a fire oh yeah kind of sucks and there's a lot of moving parts a lot of things happening behind the scenes that most homeowners don't realize and even a lot of contractors don't realize mm -hmm. um you know we we see it you know working with people who you know aren't familiar with this kind of you know job flow you know like mm. contractors all the time who maybe might not do a lot of rebuilds after a disaster yeah um they just you know it, it, it's a lot of stuff that has to happen in a very specific order right in order to keep things moving mm -hmm. convenience is king i think i've got the king here himself yeah. <laughs> um and i mean imagine you had a fire in your home you're put in temporary housing most likely you've basically got the clothes in your back and that's kind of it and you're starting from zero, you're trying to get your life together, and before you even really have time to process everything, you're spending like half your day on the phone. You're talking to your insurance carrier, your insurance agent, your insurance adjuster, and potentially wrangling like six different contractors. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, it's, you know, it's everything from, you know, depending on the severity of the fire, you've got a board up contractor, you've got emergency mitigation services, well, you know, if there's water damage from, you know, putting out the fire. You've got electrical contractors to get temporary power restored so, you know, that we can get in there and do our job. Mm -hmm. Plumbers, um, structural engineers to assess the kind of the safety of the structure, depending on how bad the fire is. I mean, there's a, there's yeah, a lot going on. You're making me sweat, Taylor. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what we found is it was worth investing in building up that construction piece because that was kind of the missing piece to be right. able to then offer that full service approach so that when somebody calls us and they, they need help with something as complicated as a fire, we can do the whole thing here. Either and the, to jump in real quick too, it allows us to be more of like a full service general contractor. Mm. So, you know, now we sense. take care of everything, scheduling any subcontractors for the stuff that we don't do in house, which really isn't a lot. There's maybe, you know, very finite niche things that we typically don't take care of in-house but for the most part we can do everything under our you know under one roof essentially yeah and um you can tell me if this is fair like, this is a little bit of a shady assertion but my feeling is another reason why this has become more important is because of you know these this is like a, a terrible yeah. stock image but <laughs> you have younger homeowners coming in who really are much less likely to have repair skills of their own or even no, know enough about yeah. it to be able to call someone and even state explain what they need. No, that that's very very accurate. Something that we've noticed, you know, a lot of new homeowners. It's just a different generation. You know, it's it, you know, it's not like you know, a lot of like. I mean, there's still a good amount of like DIY, like crafty stuff. Yeah, there's but a like, YouTube video for everything. Yeah, right? but there's not a lot of people, you know, doing their own minor plumbing repairs now or anything like you know like our our parents probably yeah. did um so it, it definitely is a lot of that now and you know it's you know your home is your probably your single biggest investment you'll make your entire life you know i mean mm. that's that is your essentially your whole life you know so it's anything anything to make it be more seamless and faster and more efficient 
is just a win mm-hmm. all around. So, um, if you're watching this and you are involved in the insurance industry, which a lot of folks are, um, I think the main takeaway here is that it's important to be able to wrangle that chaos as much as possible. Absolutely. Which can be tough if you're an agent and you don't have a first hand hand in how that claim is going. It's why you have partners who can sort of do that for you. Right. Plus, like as an insurance agent, you might have, you know, three fire claims and a water claim going on at the same time. You know, that's a lot for one agent to try and kind of wrangle and stay on top of and, you know, be in front of everything on. Yeah. So, uh, construction, 